Hey, Jeff, congrats to you. Uh, we just got Anthony, talk to him about being back. And I guess for you, a buddy of yours, and you both agreeing the same day, being back, how good is that? And what's the mindset maybe after uh, after John U's departure about maybe what's going to be counted on from you too? Obviously, I'm really excited to be back. And um, I've enjoyed getting to know everyone inside the organization in the last year. Um, and getting to go work with FERC again is going to be great. Um, and obviously, TD, getting an OC job, um, all those things were really compelling. And um, I'm just happy to be back with a quality organization that has a good locker room and um, a, you know a winning culture and excited to get to work again. And just following up on Todd, uh, what did he bring to the tight end room and what do you think he'll bring to the team as offensive coordinator? Yeah, uh, it's funny. Like, I've had a lot of different styles of tight end coaches. I've played through college and been in the league for a little bit. And um, the, the best quality of, of Todd's in, in my mind is, is he's not, he's not a stubborn dude. He just, he wants to work with you. Um, and so as a tight end coach, it was great, man. We'd have discussions about technique or scheme or whatever it was, whatever I, whatever my mind wanted to talk about, he was willing to have those discussions um, and open to hearing what I like to do and how I like to do it. And I thought, as a position coach, that was really, really valuable for me. Um, it helped me um, feel free to kind of make the most of my game or, or try new things and um, and try to improve in that area. So that's what he did really well as a tight end coach, I thought. Um, and I know his his football mind is is real sharp. And um, you know, I can't speak to him as a coordinator. I haven't been around him when he was a coordinator, so. I can't speak to him on that, but I know he's got a he's got a really good football background, and um, I'm just I'm really excited to get to keep working with him. Uh, Buck, yeah, Jeff, congrats. Um, just kind of speaking to a little bit, uh, following up with what you just said, I, can can you kind of give us an example of, of something that you might have suggested to him that you think put you in a better position last year? Because it seemed like you fit really well with what they were trying to accomplish schematically. Uh, yeah, I'm off the top of my head. One of the big um, things we kind of had an ongoing discussion within the year was our wide zone footwork. And so it's kind of a technical thing, but um, different body types do do it differently. And so a guy who has you know different hip mobility than I do, he may use different footwork to get to a landmark on a block. Um, and I have, I'm a kind of a longer body. And so I can cover a lot more ground in a shorter amount of time. And um, we just had talks throughout the year on how we were going to kind of like how we were going to modify how I did things to make me as efficient as possible. And I had all my, you know, I have my years of experience and all my crazy thoughts and Todd was able to look at it and analyze it. And okay, I think you're right about this and right about that. And let's work on you know, your first step, getting a little more width or whatever it was. And those little details that I like as a player that I want to be coached on, he was, very open to like identifying the little details that I needed to work on and then allowing me to experiment with what I thought worked. And when we found something that did work, then he would coach me up on that. Um, as opposed to just trying to hammer into me what he thought was the best way to do it. He would allow me to kind of play with techniques and play with footwork and body position and hand placement. Um, and then once we solidified how, what worked for me, then he would make it, okay, this, that's how we're gonna coach you from now on. And I'm not gonna coach you like I coach for or Prue or John Oak because everyone, everyone's body is different. Everyone moves differently. Teron? Yeah, Jeff, congrats on your deal. Uh, looking Thanks. at the, the, the tight end room, it, it's kind of like you have different guys that do different things, like first was a pass catcher, you was a blocker. How much more would you be satisfied if you guys could kind of integrate all of that and for you getting more opportunities to catch balls? Yeah, you're not going to find a tight end that, that turns down the opportunity to catch a ball, you know. Um, and so that, for me, is always great when you get when you can get the ball and run after the catch and stuff like that. Um, I, I've been asked that question a few times, like, what do I think about my role or do I, do I want it to be expanded? And obviously you want your role to be expanded because you're competitive. And But the truth is I really like what I do. I like walking. I like um, I'm, I've done it for a long time and I'm kind of made my career on it so for me blocking is is a natural is kind of the natural part of football that I love um, and 
I'm always excited to do more. And I know FERC is the same way. Like you're always trying to grow and expand your game. Um, but I can't forget the thing that's got me here, which is being a blocker. And so if I'm asked to do more, then an opportunity comes, man, I'll, I'll jump all over it. But um, in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to do what I've, I've done in the past and what I'm called on, which is to block. And I, I don't do that, you know, like um, with anything but excitement because I really enjoy doing it. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you got here during camp last year and uh, obviously you're having to learn on the fly. What was the most difficult part of that with all the COVID restrictions and whatnot? And how were some of those things made a little easier so that you could catch up? Um, yeah, it's the first time I've been in that situation where I, I came into an organization later in the year. Um, I've always ever shown up in the springtime and I've had a full month or two before OTAs to get in the playbook and then you have OTAs to kind of work on your craft and go into training camp and you're you're kind of a leg up on where you would be had you shown up in camp and so last year when I showed up in August you're kind of drinking through a fire hose you know you got a lot thrown at you um but T, that's another thing TD did like he didn't throw me to the wolves and just say okay you got to know the whole playbook tomorrow you know he allowed me to kind of work my way in to give me an actual chance because there weren't preseason games to evaluate. He was just evaluating me based on practice. And you can't really evaluate a guy if you just throw the whole playbook at him and say, good luck, because it's you're so worried about the play call and making sure you're running the right route or blocking the right guy that you can't work on technique and be yourself. And so he did a good job of slowly integrating me. Um, but it gives you it gives you a, an appreciation for having a full off season. And maybe not physically, because no one wants to you know, beat themselves up in May if they can help it. But having that off season of meetings and, and um, you know, video conferencing, any, anything like that. And, and he did a good job of meeting with me when he could and talking through things. So, uh, John Glennon. Hey, Jeff. Uh, yeah, just talking with, with you and Anthony, it certainly sounds like you guys have a lot of good things to say about, about Todd. Uh, um, do you do you get the sense, uh, you know, that the guys outside the tight end room have a good idea of what what he'll bring to the table as well? Do you, do you have any feedback from them, whether you know how well they know Todd and and what their thoughts are? Well, I'd say I'm probably um, the most inexperienced guy when it comes to like being around you know this organization for a long time and getting to know everyone really well. I, I haven't been here obviously that long. Um, but yeah, I mean, the TD show. I mean, if you're in the building, you see a TD shows up to work, and he's the first guy there. And and if he has something to present, or if he's talking about, you know, red zone offense, I mean, he's he's dialed in, he's detailed, and everyone sees that. You know, he's the guy that you, hey, TD, what 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 are we doing here? And he has the whole, he's got the he's got the dissertation on it because he knows it. Um, so everyone sees that. You know, everyone everyone shows up to work and they know who the guys are that get after it. And, and he's at the top of that list for sure. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, as things stand now, of course, it's, it's you and FERC as the, as the two tight ends. Uh, um, what, uh, you know, what, what do you guys bring as a, as a tandem? Do you think, you know, what, uh, what different strength, um, uh, you know, can, can you bring as a pair? Um, I don't know about like as a tandem, because that's kind of hard to, you have to work as a tandem for a while to figure that out. And last year there was four of us active a lot of times, you know, and, um, you know, Ferk has a lot of strengths and I think one of them is he's real flexible. He can move into a lot of different positions. You know, he can, he can play in, in line and he can spread out and he can run in the slot. Um, he can go out and play outside of the numbers too. Um, and he can speak on his strengths better than I can because he has them, but, um, that I just see his versatility, you know. Um, for me, I, I have I have ability, but it's just different. I'm not gonna, you know, run a power for the same. But I think if you can have tight ends that can do multiple things, um, then you spot and I think for presents that to a defense he's hard to he's hard to prepare for because he can do a lot of different stuff um and hopefully i do 
think I, I have some of that a bit. Uh, I think for versatility, it be, being in different positions, being able to handle um, different tasks week to week when you have, you know, Uh, we got your internet sort of going in and out. Um, we got one last question, uh, Jim. Hey, Jeff, I, I guess how happy are you for John U. Smith? And what are maybe your expectations for him moving forward? And then kind of a follow-up to that, how much do you pay attention to free agency and, and what have you seen? And what do you think about all the changes that have taken place on your team in the last couple of weeks? Um, well, first of all, I mean, I, I texted John right after I saw it and I was, I'm thrilled for him, man. It's, it's, uh, I know for him, it's a pretty special time because he's put in a lot of hard work and um, know, knowing his work ethic and the kind of guy he is in the locker room, dude, it's richly deserved. Um, and so I wish him nothing but the best, man. He's going to go to a place that I think is going to, it's going to help him um, be even better than he is. And he's already a, a damn good tight end. So um yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up for him. Um, and as far as the free agency stuff, man, I'm not a social media guy, so I don't, I'm not really, not really watching it a ton. I was only interested in free agency this year because I was involved. Um, but the truth is I don't really look at too much of that stuff. You know, I, I've seen the stuff, some of the moves the Titans have made, and obviously I'm kind of keeping up with that, but uh, I haven't been looking around the league to see what's happened because – yeah, I, I got other stuff I'm doing right now, so um, I can't really give you a, a good answer on that one. And, and what do you do during the offseason, I mean, to, to get ready for the next year? I mean, are you already in, in workout mode, already hitting it hard, or what, what, are you, what are you doing to kind of gear up right now? Yeah, every year, um, the first couple of years in the league, you, have, you kind of figure out your uh, how you need to prepare. And so I think my first off season, I started working out like, like a week or something after the season, just cause I was like, I gotta go work out. And, and I burnt myself out by May. And so the next year it was a little less and I took a little more time off. And then, um, this is my, this will be my seventh year. And so, you know, I'm not going to spend my off season just physically killing myself because the season's too demanding and, um, you don't want to go into the season, anything less than, as close to hundred percent as you can be. And so I try to make sure that I'm not allow not allowing my competitive side to ruin me by getting, getting after it too much too early. Um, as the season gets closer and closer, you ramp it up like everyone does. Um, but right now it's, it, I'm working out, but it's nothing like crazy. I'm, I'm doing a lot of auxiliary stuff and, you know, working on stability and range of motion and flexibility and stuff like that to get my body back. Um, and then, uh, as a, as we get into April and stuff, you kind of start ramping up. Um, it's a pretty typical thing. Like a lot of guys do, it's nothing, I don't have any secrets or crazy stuff. It's just, you have to work hard, you work hard. And when you have time to, to not do that and you focus on, you know, your, your health and your, your, your flexibility and mobility. And then you just repeat that year after year and see how long you can stick around for and I may slide in one more since I'm the last guy, but what what happened last season with the virus and no OTAs and many camps? I mean, does it help prepare you this off season as far as knowing what to expect and, and kind of knowing how to, to treat your body leading up to July? Yeah, it does. Um, I Like I said, I'm not really keeping up. I'm not really sure if we have an idea of what our off season looks like yet. I don't know if you guys know, um, <laughs> but I haven't, uh, I haven't, looked into that a ton yet I'm we got a newborn at the house so we're kind of swamped with that but uh for me the the no the no OTAs last year and nothing until training camp I think it helped me from my health perspective it allowed me to really work on some just some some stuff that I needed to work on you know um, mostly just mobility and making sure that I I wasn't losing my range of motion and um my flexibility and stuff uh and then I think just decreasing the workload before the season, I think, I think it helped. I know a lot of guys feel the same way. Um, OTAs are super valuable. I'm not arguing that we should get rid of them because I want to work on my craft too. And you need to play against other football players to do that. Um, 
but I do think the the lightened workload was was huge for me personally.